I'm all packed up at Yulis. I said I was going to leave on Wednesday and I, I checked with the Golden Cap Holiday Park and they have availability. So, I know it's a bit more than I was planning to do. I looked around that area and anything that's remotely near Golden Cap is like 20, 25 a night. You can't find anything. And, and anybody who read my blogs from last year on tjbaker.co.uk and just search for Jaunt, you'll see them. Well, now, how much I love holiday parks. In fact, I'm actually looking at Waterside Holiday Park as I record this and random people arrive. But, um, yeah, it's it's the closest place, so we'll see. It's got good reviews. There are a few alternatives around there. Um, one holiday place, which will go unmentioned, which starts with an E, and ends in YPE, uh, wanted £35 a night. I was like, you what? <laughs> that better be some gold level holiday park, you know, glamping shizzle for that price. It wasn't, it was just a just a tent, no car and you know. Usually it's less because I've got you know, I'm I'm a walker, no car, just one person. But you know. And there was another place that I might go to, um, home farm which there was one place called Menor Farm where they only got cold showers I was like mm, no that's, the, that's my only stipulation <laughs> does it have cold showers or not um, and then there's the place called Home Farm which sounds quite nice it's sort of in between it depends how far, far I want to go because I always said I want to head for Lyme Regis well I remember I've done this, I'm not totally sure whether I've done the walk from Weymouth to Lyme Regis. I think I have, because I looked at the little Thompson Tower. There's a tower and something. I was like thinking, that sounds really familiar. So I might have done it once, because I know I walked as far as... Because I... What you probably don't know is I did a lot of co- coastal walks connecting um, near... Oh, what's it called? Uh, up in Kent, Fairham. I think it was Fairham. And that sort of way. Uh, Del Key and all that sort of chisel. Uh, almost up to the island. Um, I can't remember the name of the island. I'm blanking the name of the island at the moment. All the way around in sections, you know, so you've got, you know, um, all the way around. And then I, I did the Thames up to Oxford. Uh, no, I haven't done. And then I did basically Gravesend connecting all the way around to um, Chichester, and there's a few gaps, and then it goes all the way around to uh, Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis is as far as I went easterly. And, and that was, so there's lots of people arriving. Lyme Regis as far as, uh, you know, I went east-wise. And there a few bits I didn't do, like, I, I sort of stopped at Chichester and there's sort of a big gap, and then it restarts again around uh, Studland Bournemouth. So I haven't actually done the section Bournemouth to Southampton, although I'd walked bits of that in the past, like, uh, around Bosham. So, so, yeah, so I've kind of done bits of this before and I th- I'm not too sure I remember going to Lyme Regis so if I went to Lyme Regis and didn't walk the other way I'm pretty sure I walked to Weymouth or somewhere along the way and then sort of bailed and went inland I don't know anyway I've got a heavy rucksack to carry to Preston and I've got to get there for seven so I better shut up Always the ninth wave. Yes, I made it to Golden Cap Holiday Park. And as is traditional, not with every place I go to, but everywhere it's a beach, I am sitting on the beach at dusk watching the sunset. I had a very wonderful meal at the Anchor Inn at Sea Town, which uh, Golden 
cap holy park is just off and I started with it. I was actually eyeing up the Prosecco. It would have been cheaper actually to buy a, Prosecco, a bottle of uh, Prosecco Rosé if I had a glass instead. Of a bottle. I'd probably be completely smashed tonight, which is not actually a bad thing. I still have a few things to do back at the tent. In fact, I pretty much left it as it is with all my bags and stuff outside, so <laughs> it's all right. Because I, I, I realise that the they stopped doing food 8 a so I was like, okay, I'll have some food now then. I just went down to the beach and had a meal. Um, a really nice short, slow cup short rib with sort of chunky chips and then had a hot chocolate with the whipped cream I couldn't get in Yulee's. For some reason, Yulee's, the coffee shop, only did marshmallows but never whipped cream. I finally did it. It was loaded hot chocolate, so more alcohol. I had a Krabby's as well. I'm not drunk, but I have been drawing images in the... Well, it's like clay. It's this mud at the bottom of the cliffs, which collapse regularly. So I might get crushed in the middle of this podcast. And... Uh, oh, there's lights in the distance. Is that lights on the... Is, is someone on the headland, or is that distant lights? I'm not sure. Looks like a firelight, actually. So that's what maybe a fire on the headland, and there's a... Fog... What looks like a... Yeah, traffic light behind it. But, yeah. But yes. So, I finally made it. It was actually a quite a... Well... I say quite a painless journey. Um the bit after the recording earlier uh, was hard because it was very hot, middle of the day and I had my full pack on with extra weight because I haven't mentioned this but I I have a um, I'm using a camping gas cooker because I tried all the ecological ways of using you know, twigs and wood and found wood and whatever and it just took too long and you spent your whole holiday collecting twigs and they were gone in like five seconds and you could never actually boil anything so I gave in even though I absolutely hate gas and fossil fuels and that kind of thing I actually went back to my old which I already had it's not like I bought a new one but I already had a, a but I because it had been hanging around for two decades, I didn't know if it'd work. So I tested it before I came out. Of course. And it worked. And I but the thing is I didn't know how much was in it because of course I, I don't keep records on how much I used it beforehand. Turns out not that much because I've been I did two risottos on that on that uh canister. It's a bigger canister. Um the blue you know the blue ones. Two Pastas, which take about sort of 10 15 minutes each. Uh, coffee, most days, not every day, I think a couple of days I've got bought coffees, but I've been very good. I mean, this is the thing uh, about the treating myself to a meal at the Anchor Inn is that actually I have been really good at not going, partly out of the barn at Yuli's just being a bit dysfunctional, and partly not having the opportunity, wanting to head back, or well, partly because I wanted to use up this gas canister which didn't happen so I ended up carrying two the smaller replacement <laughs> and I wasn't going to ditch the old one you know hey use it all so I ended up carrying two canisters and a, f- a few extra bits and bobs I bought while I was there and a few things I found I found a I was eyeing up one of these um bendy well I call them clickies because you know, click 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 and they never bloody work um, the little, you know, um, the barbecue fire lighters, the little you know, fire sort of lighters on a stick, the little thing, you know, long prongy thing you, you light gas and barbecues with. Um, but it's one with a bendy one. I was, I was looking at them in the store and thinking, well, a couple of quid, but I don't need that. And then I found one on the ground, empty, a bit trashed. But again, I don't like wasting things, so I, I'm just carrying it with me and seeing if it, it might be, you know, it might not work, but I suspect it just needs a refill. And if so, given the fact that my my existing clicky has 
seem to have died a death and have had to buy a little lighter. Um, it probably will. It probably be fine. Probably probably be a good replacement for that. So yeah, um, I'm gonna head back to the tent in a bit before it gets too dark. I've got my torch. They actually sell good headlights here as well. I always bought one, but it would require getting more AAA batteries, and I can't use my existing AAs I bought accidentally, which is the idea. Um, so I was a bit loath to get one. But this is why I generally try not to do it is buy shit, because I end up to carry it home. But it's different if I find stuff, or if I'm like trying to not waste stuff. Oh, no, I can't do that. Because, I don't know, I'm just programmed not to waste things but the people here are really good um i had a as the bus ride was good um amazingly i got to preston uh, about 20 minutes later was the through bus it only it only is like every two hours or so but it's the through bus to bridport and then i got, changed the report and got the x51 here which is only a short journey like nine ten minutes so we're outside of bridport bridport looks lovely West Bay, less so, although I might walk there. Although tomorrow I think I'll probably head towards Golden Cap, which is a mile away, see how high that is and how I cope with that. It's the highest point of the Jurassic Coast. Um, I don't think it's the highest point of the coast will stop, but it is one of the highest points of, certainly the highest point of the Jurassic Coast. And you're know, higher than Dirtle Door. And then I might go on to Charmouth. Um, then if, you know, if I've got extra time, well, I'll well, jump on the bus, the X51, and come back and maybe do the other direction. I don't know. Seems how I go, really. Um, but I certainly want to do the other direction to Abbotsbury and West Bay. I don't want to stay in West Bay. West Bay looked a bit like Swanage. A less, a, a less picturesque Swanage. I um, mean that with all disrespect to Swanage. Well, Swanage has some bits which are nice, but West Bay looks like they've taken out all of the Victorian bits and just left the rest. Whereas Bridport looked really nice. It has a Waitrose, you know. It's very posh. Uh, for this part of the world, which tends to be Coop and Spa. But, yeah. I had to walk, as well as that walk to Preston... I had to walk nearly a mile from the road and it was down one of those what I call Dorset motorways i.e. a single track but with loads of cars you know like one every five ten seconds yeah that was a bit stressful I've learned and thank you Google for not telling me this I've learned that there are paths and better roads to come down like Mill Lane or there are some paths to the road uh, the woman in the spa shop who's very good everyone here is really friendly um, de- I'm not in Weymouth anymore so I can slag off Weymouth um, <laughs> Tim is drunk no I'm not that drunk uh, but yeah oh I mentioned about Weymouth being a bit weird a bit kind of unfriendly I really don't get it might be the honeymoon period but I really don't get that here people are generally nice and it's such a shock. I'm so used to... Um, I'm just so used to that weird attitude that you get around the Weymouth sometimes. And everyone is really nice. Even when there was a bit of a problem with the, the not booking. Because I was told just to come here by the receptionist and said, Oh, there's plenty of space. You don't have to worry. You don't have to book. We'll see you. Uh, it's open till 7. Turns out the shop takes over the bookings after five I arrived just after five and it turns out they were been told that there was no space and to turn everyone away um, but actually you go into the campsite park there's plenty of space it's not it's not as far from full so um, mixed messages but after that was sorted out though it was a bit of a panic because I was like it was a long walk down a hill to get here and I was just envisaging having to try and walk up that hill and thinking, I just can't cope with this. Um, but it turns out there are other ways of getting up to the... Chidduck. I don't know how to say this. It's C-H-I-D-E-O-C-K. I haven't asked a local how to pronounce it, so I might be, it might be Chidduck. I might be Chidduck. It's probably Chidduck. 
because even if you've got all those extra vowels, a bit like Lippock, you don't say them. Um, well, Lippock something like two rather than with Chidiok, is Chid, it's Chidiok, so C H I D E O C K. I don't think there's a U in there, but yeah, lots of extra vowels, but it's probably Chidiok. But I have to find out from a local way you say it. But yeah, that looks really nice. It looks like a good church there. Uh, Abbotsbury looks wonderful. Uh, Swire looks interesting. I might f- find that along the coast. I think West Bay I might visit along the coast and just sort of wander by. It's a bit of a Beaucleve Bay situation. Very, you know, amusements and five trillion fish and It looks like a mix of Mevagissi. If you took out the original Cornish stuff from Mevagissi and you've got like a little kind of harbour and they just filled it full of, of fish and chips and arcades. That was basically West Bay. Um, whereas Bridport is like, just like nine days, like, ooh, upscale. And, and for working class, I should be like, oh, you know, I should be all about the boat cleave, all about the the um, the West Bay, but I just find it a bit boring to spend your time complaining on the beach, eat nothing but fish and chips, wear one of those funny hats and spend your time in the arcades it's something I did as a kid and it's my background it doesn't mean I want to stay there um, I'm more interested in well cliffs and walking and yeah it's all a bit middle class really isn't it oh dear I'm a class traitor no not really but I was talking to a friend online about politeness because I found this really odd uh, with Euclid. Euclid Euclid is very middle class I think you know there's lots of jacketers and tabanthas and you know you know, Joshua's and all you know there's lots of children with very odd names uh, running around in floppy hats and Nirvana t-shirts which they're too young to ever heard of um and people were ostensibly friendly there, but they weren't. They would say hello, but they're a bit like, hello, can you fuck off now? Uh, the locals are lovely. Apart from in Weymouth. <laughs> in Weymouth, they are shouty from the cars. And that could be outsiders, but, you know, somewhere like October, um, that probably was not tourists shouting from those cars so yeah there seems to be a weird kind of aggro and that's coming from a working class so you know you've got this southern working class uh, and you see those in the holiday holiday box who are generally not in all but quite standoffish and be like who are you and be quite rude with you in a way which as I explained to a friend of mine I would have a sort of seven shades of shit beaten out of me as a child if I dared to even be like that because northern working class are all about being friendly not completely I mean uh, when you've got the Yorkshire approach is basically kill you with kindness and feed you tea until you explode or run away um, whereas the Lancashire people are a bit more a bit more standoffish but once once we like you because I was born in Lancashire um, you can never fucking get rid of us really it's it's like you know bonded for life that's you know and I met a couple of Sheffield couple earlier and it, so there's quite a few northern people here and um, yeah people are friendly <laughs> so just that sort of divide it's class and location and all kinds of things and, and again these are they, they, these are these are slightly drunken um, generalisations but I do think there's there's a lot of that like middle class people are like oh what about my standing I have to be polite to you know to seem you know good in the community southern working class I don't really know I haven't unpacked that yet because um, I've known people who are southern working class and they are really solid but a lot of the holy part people were you could tell from the accents were southern working class but wouldn't say hello to me and like, oh yeah, you know. And then you've got the northern ones who are very, you know, stereotypically friendly and lovely. And um, there seems to be a location thing as well. 
Weymouth seems to be a bit kind of I don't know uptight itself but as soon as you get more and more sort of to the west the more it gets more classic Cornwall Devon you know deeper Dorset sort of you know very you know genuinely friendly I, I don't know maybe it's the influence of London and everything I don't know but I think it's you know it's interesting we've got 16 minutes better, better shut up so yes you. I will use a, an image that I took of Golden Cap uh, I, call, I posted it to Instagram and called it the Golden Dutch Cap uh, yeah Golden Dutch Cap Angle because yeah I had to explain that and you should never have to explain a joke but obviously Golden Cap Dutch Cap Dutch Angles if you don't know what Dutch Angles are Dutch Angles are the slanted angles very popular in the 1920s and 1930s maybe the Dutch people had had too much to drink I don't know but it's everything at 30 degrees 20 degrees that kind of thing it just happened to be I took it at that angle but actually I prefer that angle I was kind of I corrected it and went no I prefer the slanted angle Something about the angle was like, eh, it's much nicer, even though it's not right. Yeah, but it's okay. As the song goes, oh my god, I can see in the distance, um, there must be the lights of Lyme Regis. I have been to Lyme Regis, I say, I think I've walked, I suspect I've walked this, or part of this, um, in the past. And Lyme Regis is nice, it's, it's very... It's a bit like Bournemouth. It's it's less throbbing nightlife and fireworks every. I saw those on Monday. The, the, every Monday in August they do fireworks in Weymouth. Less kind of younger and sort of no, you know, flashing attractions and and fun fair on the beach. More older clientele. But it's nice. It's very, you know, it's very classic. It's one of the first... After the... I mentioned the uh, Osmington White Horse. I mentioned to somebody who was, you know, who was, who was looking something up for me and this kid was asking about it. I did a little... I potted a local history lesson about this King George III coming to Weymouth and starting the whole trend of going to the beach. Um, but shortly after that, and I don't know exactly when, but Lyme Regis kicked off as being, hence the Regis as well. Um, so I don't think it was, it may not be the Charles III, but one royal transferred their affection. And then that became a posher place to go to. But yeah, the, there's been a whole, you know, a whole load of these. But I, I'm not going to walk. I, I know that walk. Or I know that the walk along the coast to Lyme Regis, it's very flat. It's a bit like the walk around Weymouth Bay. And it's not interesting to do at all. There's no cliffs or anything. So I think what I'll do is do Golden Cap, which is very up. The contrast is very up and very down. And Charmouth looks interesting. Um, there's a campsite there as well. I know that, you know, the campsite, there isn't a campsite. The Charmouth campsite, miles inland. That's, that's really bizarre. Um, so I'll probably do that and then just jump on the bus and come back and um, or circle back and then do the direction but I really do want to go back to Abbotsbury Castle which is really good um, there was lots of there was lots it was a, I think the we, I was like where's the thunderstorm but I think it happened on the bus luckily I mean, we did have a massive downpour when it was on the bus but yeah, there's there's lots of little bits like that where I would like to go back, um, and and I will do so, and I might. I think this is as further as I want to go on this trip west. I need to do a lot more research about post line Regis and what's what's over there. Um, but you know, sticking to the Jurassic Coast thing, I think I will do so in this trip. But because there's enough in between here and Weymouth um, which I don't know about uh, Abbotsbury Castle and Abbotsbury itself and uh, you know all those so yeah, I'm rambling I better, I better wind this up it's going to be another long podcast sorry about that without any artwork oh, what am I like 
yeah, I didn't do any artwork today. Um, it's just it's just too stressful with all the travelling and stuff. You know, I I could sketch on the buses, but you know, yeah, there wasn't really much much interest in that. I was more pissed off that I didn't get a. You know, all of the f- buses I've been getting, nearly all of them, have had USB chargey things. And one of the big problems is going to be, I want to go and do some washing. Um, oh, I didn't get any detergent. Maybe I'll do it tonight then. Ah, I forgot to get some detergent. Um, but the the whole system is through an app on your phone. And I've got nowhere to charge my phone because um, my battery's pretty much dead and I didn't get to charge on the bus and there's no place to charge at the campsite apart from the shop and the shop closed at 8 and so I couldn't really do it you know because you know it was it would have been if I would have had to skip the meal to do it and, you know, yeah it was that sort of stuff you know so I will do that tomorrow so I don't know if I'll post this tonight or what or what we'll do um, hopefully the battery will hold out and who knows? I did rig up the solar, which is what I was talking to the Sheffield couple about. Um, and who knows? I may or may not uh, have enough charge in it from that short evening. Probably not. You tend uh, and my battery, my big battery, has been acting weirdly. So I do need to get a replacement for that. It's an old. It's been. A, I've had it for a few years. It's not my really big one, but it, that one doesn't really like solar very much. It goes a bit weird. It says it, it says it's it says it's a bit you know more charged than it is. So I need to get um, one which is um, you know a, a new one. And the one that I'm using to, sort of my day to day sort of carry with me battery is a really good battery by Efu E A F U. Um, only six thousand MAA one, um, but I might try one of theirs at ten thousand and see if it if it's happy with solar charging. Because bat, this is a thing. Um, batteries are weird. Some batteries don't mind the extra. You know, I've got voltage regulations in them. I don't mind the upper downy. Uh, some make weird noises, like my old one. It's a weird, weird whining noise, probably because the transformer's going. What the fuck? You know, when it's really sunny, it's getting too much voltage or something. Well, too much current, actually, not voltage. Because I, I think the it's a proper it's a proper solar charger with a 5-volt output. Um, but I think the current varies, and I'm not sure my old battery would cope with that. But it's much bigger, heavy batteries than we're putting in. So, yes, it's, I think it, I, I did test it with the multimeter once, and it, it does pump out a lot of voltage and charge current at some point there's no it's none and I think what my old battery doesn't cope with is the bits where it stops and then restarts it doesn't always restart and it sometimes lies about how much it's got and suddenly you plug something in and you find out it's got nothing in it so it's not yeah it's being a bit crazy ah 24 minutes I'm going to shut up so yes tomorrow hopefully more work Go and say hello to Golden Cap. Um, go and say hello to Charmus, and maybe go and say hello. Certainly, say hello to the beach and sunlight because the headland and the beach looks very drawable. Um, this may not be a fire; it might just be lights in the distance. So it does look like a. But yeah. So the headlands here look very drawable, so certainly I'd like to do some drawing for them. And I can do so because I'm staying here, you know, late on or early on. I don't have to run off and um because the car park closes here at eight PM so but I've got a luxury of staying here so I can you know go up to Golden Cap at any time and like I did with Dodal Door, but I'm not gonna do it tonight. <laughs> Two in the morning well, it depends how much brandy I have, but I've got a nasty feeling the kids at the campsite stole my brandy unless I packed it and forgot where I packed it. I need to. That's what I need to do tonight. Is what I go back and do is unpack, find, you know, unpack all my food and stuff. Um, it's just been sitting there and hopefully hasn't been attacked by pesties. Hopefully, it hasn't been stolen. All my stuff. I hope not. 
So I'll speak to you soon.